So, well, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, my research project and uh, this presentation will be divided into parts. In the first one, I will introduce what is my uh, original research project, uh, uh, so the classical historical research and still uh, carry on. And uh, in the second part, I will, um, I will try to explain how I uh, think I can relate the research uh, within the Sendari project. So, uh, the original research uh, uh, is about the, the mobilization of, um, of Italian-speaking Austro-Hungarian soldiers during and after World War I. And uh, to be clear, we are talking about 60,000 enlisted Italians in the Austro-Hungarian army coming from the uh, regions of uh, Trentino and Venezia Giulia that were at the time part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. And we have from them uh, 10,500 casualties and the most important things for this research are the 25,000 prisoners. Because these 25,000 prisoners are the only, uh, let's say, ex-soldiers that are being studied right now. So we don't have any, any secondary literature about the soldiers that were not taken prisoners and dismissed at the end of the war. We have a little bit of literature about the prisoners. The prisoners were all, all taken to Russia because the Italian soldiers were all dispatched to the Eastern Front. And the Russian strategy towards uh, prisoners, was, uh, Austrian prisoners, was to exploit their national belongings to use them against Austria in some ways. For instance, the Russians uh, enlisted uh, thousands of uh, Czechoslovakian prisoners uh, to make them fight against the Austrian Empire. And in the case of the Italian prisoners, uh, the Russian government uh, wanted to give them to the Italian government. So basically the Russians proposed to Italy that the uh, prisoners could uh, declare themselves Italian citizens and go to Italy. Uh, this, was in the attempt, this was in the attempt of uh, keeping Italy neutral or convince Italy to go to the war against, Russia, uh, against Austria. And I shall remember that in 1914, Italy was uh, um, allied with Austria. Uh, the attempts were three in October 1914, February 1915, and in June 1915 after uh, Italy declared war to Austria. And Italy finally accepted, uh, but there were some um, problems in dealing with these prisoners, which is the most part of my research because the Italian government wanted to, uh, at the beginning, uh, they wanted to keep good relationships with Austria before the beginning of the war. And uh, because even if for propaganda reasons, these prisoners were considered to be uh, Italian citizens with their own rights and part of the great Italian nation, they were still Austrian citizens. And uh, basically the 80% of the Italian coming from Austria done, uh, didn't have any patriotic attachment to Italy. So they were to be trusted as new Italian citizens. And another reason is, uh, is the problem is the cost, the cost and the, and the logistic to go to Russia, take these prisoners and uh, bring them to Italy. Because uh, basically the, the um, ground way to Russia was impossible. To, to be followed, and even the Russians had some problems in uh, managing, the, uh, managing the prisoners. <coughs> so this is just a sketch to understand how this, the mobilization started and went further. Uh, we had three, uh, three missions of um, Italian personnel to the uh, prisoner camp of Kirsenov, where the Russians attempted to gather all the Italian prisoners. Uh, the first one was a mission from the Moscow Embassy in November 1915. There was another mission, a military mission, uh, between July and, November, July and November 1916. And uh, a third mission started in February 1917, at the very beginning of the Russian Revolution, and stayed in Russia until 1920. Eventually, at the, uh, the third mission, uh, had not the aim of getting the prisoners to Italy, but the, had the aim to um, enlist them 
in the Italian army and use them to fight against the Russian Revolution within the uh, general uh, international um, coalition that was moving against the, Rush, uh, the Reds in the, in the Russian Civil War. So the third mission basically fought in the uh, Russian Civil War. And uh, <clears throat> the transportation of prisoners uh, started in September 1916. 4,000 managed to uh, arrive in Italy via Archangel in northern North Russia and the, uh, the UK and France. There was a second small transport from Vladivostok uh, via USA and there was a, other transports from September 1918 from the um, Italian uh, military mission in Tianjin in China. And <clears throat> if you look at the numbers, we have less than 8,000 prisoners, basically, they basically came back to war. Uh, new sources I'm uh, evaluating right now uh, are showing that there were other Italian missions to Russia in 1921 and 1922, and that the um, returning of prisoners to Italy went further till, and this is still something I have to look after, till 1941. <clears throat> So, uh, while I was doing this research, I faced some uh, complexity and some problems. Uh, the first one is that the sources are, located, uh, are, are in different countries and in different languages. So we have sources in Austria, in Italy, Austria, uh, Russia, and in the United Kingdom. There will be probably something also in France and Portugal for reasons that I, I maybe I can explain later. Uh, there is a, an insufficient uh, bibliography about this topic. There are uh, less uh, researches and the most are, um, well, in the best cases, uh, based on uh, um, press or uh, in ac on an accounts or ego sources, but we don't have, uh, we don't have literature based on um, um, regular and um, constant uh, archival research. So also the data we have about archival references or archival uh, documents are inaccurate or outdated. Uh, even because, uh, also because, uh, for instance, the Russian archives changed a lot after the fall of the Soviet Union. It's also a problem. So focusing on the Italian situation, the, uh, which is the one I know better, uh, in Italy we have a decentralized archival system. So we have basically uh, state archives, we have a central state archives in, uh, archive in Rome, and we have state archives in each uh, province city. So we have basically 90 state archives in Italy. Um, the sources about this topic are um, in six archives, located in three different cities, in Trento, in Trieste, and in Rome. Uh, even in each city, there are different archives keeping uh, related documents. And uh, there are four archives that I have to evaluate that are in Genoa, Turin, Milan, and Naples, that are the cities in which uh, the, um, where the, uh, the prisoners were hosted when they came back uh, uh, to Italy. So all the data about the um, transitional camps or uh, the um, hosting of these prisoners are probably in these archives. Furthermore, we have thousands of documents that are not indexed. So there are archives in which they say, okay, we have documents about the topic, but no one looked at that, so we don't have an index or um, an inventory. And finally, there is difficult access to archives. There are archives that, uh, uh, that basically don't provi uh, cannot provide the reading rooms or that they have just a restricted, a restricted access. So, in order to overcome this complexity, um, I thought that, uh, it could be an idea to uh, provide uh, a collective gathering point for all available data and so with the idea of collecting up-to-date uh, research data to provide useful information about the archives, to organize the bibliography, and to give, um, in this way, 
probably we could uh, give insight to new research or promote scholarly cooperation. And the way in which, um, which I thought it was best to reach these results was to create an online research guide and by extending the research topic because I thought that the issues related with the Italian minority in the Austro-Hungarian army is too restricted. So uh, a good approach would be to uh, focus on the, uh, on the general problem of minorities in the Austro-Hungarian army and to integrate this research guide into a wider research infrastructure that could be the one of Sendari. So this is the second part. Uh, I will illustrate why, how and why um, I came to the idea of this research guide. So why to extend the topic? My initial research was limited. It was uh, a very uh, limited group and a minor problem in the economy of history, if you want to say that. And extending the topic is more appropriate uh, for uh, promoting coordinate, comparative, and interdisciplinary approaches. And uh, the specific topic of uh, studying minorities in the uh, multinational army and their development, of, I mean, before, during, and after the war, it seems to, uh, to fit uh, and to, to be able to get a, a considerable advantages from a, a centralized research infrastructure. And uh, a centralized infrastructure may also allow uh, external contribution from other researchers. So uh, the structure of the guide uh, will be based on an um, introduction text, which should explain the topic and the uh, uh, state of the art of research and the possible expansion of research in other directions. And this uh, text should be linked to different sections uh, concerning archival sources, archives, bibliography, research papers, online resources, and uh, a section that I called network, uh, which, is, which should be dedicated to um, promoting networking between researchers. The archival sources, um, I, I thought about um, archiving, uh, okay, describing the archival sources for single records. Uh, so, um, giving title, signature, and archive of each record, uh, describing the type of sources, maybe letter, report, ego sources, and the time span, and the short description of the content of these records. Then, uh, in the archive sections, I will give the uh, section. I will give the name and location of the archives. Useful information like opening times, contacts, access policies, and uh, copy policies, as well as link to online search engine if available. And I have to say about the Italian archives, normally is not available. Um, I thought it important to, to describe access and copy policies because if someone from abroad is planning a, a research time, it uh, these are valuable information to plan the, the correct time and energy to put on a, on a specific archive. The bibliography should be organized into subtopics and um, in the limits of what I can do or other people will do, uh, uh, we will provide short abstracts for each work. And um, the section of research papers is can host published works, but uh, in my idea was to host unpublished works. So uh, projects, um, previews of papers or conference papers. So all this research material that normally cannot find a, a suitable publication or is not enough for a publication, but can be useful for other people to have an insight of uh, where the research is going. And the online resources can be, for instance, uh, links to other Sendari guides related to World War I, or uh, if available to online archives or um, that provide full access, full online access to sources or pictures or anything. And the network section is um, 
a place I, will, uh, I fought for um, for placing comments, requests, uh, cooperation requests, uh, uh, and to promote exchange and coordination between scholars. So for instance, the same research I'm doing, I am doing coordinated with another colleague in Italy, which can read and speak Russian and is working on the Russian archives. So the, the topic fits very well with this kind of uh, way of working, let's say. So what I expect from a, a research guide of this kind is to uh, improve collection and sharing of research data about minor topics, as the problem of minorities in World War I, to simplify the access to peripheral archives and collections that mostly are, they, most archives don't even have a, a website, so a web page. So uh, for foreign researchers mostly, it's difficult to access to, to certain collections. Uh, to simplify comparative transnational and interdisciplinary approaches and uh, probably to foster new research approaches and projects. I mean, also doing this presentation, I got the idea for a, a new paper, so maybe it can work this way. Thank you. <laughs>